What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, I'm going to be talking about services and dependency injection. And to just kind of convey to you the importance of services and dependency injection, I will start off with a very entertaining story. So, the largest app I've ever worked on, like order, orders of magnitude larger than any type of software that I've ever worked on, did not use any fancy design patterns. It didn't use any fancy algorithms. It was just a giant CRUD app in the backbone. Like 90% of this software was services and dependency injection. Like I said, it did not use any other crazy de design patterns. Just uh, like millions and millions of lines of code. And it was literally just all services and dependency injection. Services and dependency injection you will never get away from. You will always see services and dependency injection wherever you go. And it's sort of difficult to explain. So in our app, let's just say we've got our list. We've already built our list in our detail page. A far cry from a very complex app. But what if we just keep going and going and we just keep needing to add features? And next thing you know, there's features over here and there's features on features. And this feature's got a feature. and eventually it turns into nobody thinks their software is going to grow out of control till it does and what do you do when you need to pass down state to all of this like what's the protocol for that when our app becomes so large that we cannot pass down state through up and down and a lot of times it doesn't even make sense to have smart components and dumb components we've already got our smart components here but there almost can become a time when there's just too many components to keep track of. So what do we do? If only there was just some code out here that wasn't in the tree that we can just kind of just bring in at our heart's desire. What if we just needed some code down here? What if we just needed some code down here? What if we just needed, maybe our code relied on code and maybe we had some extra code over here that even this code tied into this is when we start running into services services happen let me just bring it my thing down whenever you've if you so if you ever just been programming and you just ever thought to yourself like i just need like a class to bring in like all of this extra code it doesn't have anything to do with the actual view or in our case, these actual components, it's just code that achieves some tasks that's outside of like our view model code, our code behind code. And that is the beauty of services and dependency injection. And for the first like year of your career, this is what I would describe. And it go, it's much more nuanced than this. It goes much deeper than this, but for your first year, of programming, you really only need to know this. It's where you put your HTTP calls or your database calls and all of your calls that are either going outside the internet or calling some kind of outside service. So just imagine this is our app. If your app needs to go to the internet, like the cloud, if it needs to pull data from an API, or maybe it needs to pull data from a database. This is going to be a very simple database. This will be a, a database. What if your Angular app had other things that it tied into? Like, what if it tied into MongoDB and you just wanted to do some type of, maybe you could do a database call in your front end. That'd be kind of weird. It'd be more back end, but I guess you could. I don't recommend that. But more than likely, though, it's only going to be for HTTP calls. And really, the whole entire idea of dependency injection and services is that we're abstracting away our code and to even I'm just going to go down one more rabbit hole before we actually start getting into code. So let's just say we have this is like a, a fake class. This is this doesn't even exist. And we have a function in here. And I'm going to switch over to the red pen. This is our function and this is doing do this or that. This is where it starts. This is where it ends. And we have a chunk of code right here that's doing something. And we notice that do this is equal to zero. This part of code right here is doing a lot. That would be another case where we would put it out into the service. But another thing that this is the last thing that I'm going to talk about before is that 
the way that we bring in our services and we bring in this abstracted code or we bring in any code that we take outside, more specifically HTTP calls, if it's Angular, is we put it in here. So in this, we, we would have this and that service. I'm going to drag that over. And then we would have our this and that service, or let's just call it that service. We would just call it that service. So we, we're gonna put it up in the constructor. And instead of having all this right here, let me see. Instead of having all this code right here, I'm gonna have to erase all this right here. What you wanna do is you would get rid of this and put that service do that. And if you don't know where I got to do that, it's right here this, that service. And then we would just have a nice little function call instead of having all of this, you know, code right here. We could just abstract it away. We could put it we could put it in the cupboard and our code will look a lot cleaner. Okay, so let's do a quick recap of what we are going to do in our app. First, we have the list. We have a detail page, and what we have right now is we have all of our data we have all of our array inside of our list which is right now a pretty bad design pattern even if it is just a simple pokemon app so what we are going to do is we are going to abstract that array and we are going to make it a service so that we can inject all of our pokemon within other places in our app we could just have a simple function where we can inject pokemon into our list we can inject it into our detail, which I would not recommend. That is not a good design pattern, but you could do it if you really wanted to. But main thing is, is we're getting that code out and we are going to put it within our own service. So first thing that you want to do is you want to actually go in and create your own service. And you can do this many ways. There's ng, you could just go ng service and type in your service or you could do what i like to do is i just like to use angular files and it will quickly scaffold angular files for you just at a click of a button and what i'm going to do first is i'm just going to go in and actually create my own components so i'm going to go in here i'm going to go services then i'm going to right click and i'm going to generate a service and it's going to pretty much do everything for me. Angular is really good about being so that it j just very automatically um, makes the service for you. So the next thing that we're going to do is Angular doesn't know, uh, and most frameworks are still like this, like they don't know automatically know where you're trying to do dependency injection. So even C Sharp, Java, all of these languages Java even has like a whole entire framework built on dependency injection. It's just for it, but Angular has this built in for you. You just have this injectable and this is how it picks it up. But you still have to do one more thing. You need to add it to your module. Always remember whenever you're doing stuff like this, more than likely not, you're gonna have to add it to your module. And the way that you do it is you just go down here and services are a type of provider. Don't really know why that is the case, but they are just a provider and I just kind of roll with it. So next thing is we need to go in here and we need to create it. This, this function is going to be the function that can be used throughout our whole entire app. And it is so cool. <laughs> also, let's go ahead and up here. We don't have to do this, but just for practice sake, let's put a return type so that we can be very specific we are going to return a array of Pokemon. Next thing is we're gonna get this ugly array out of here. This is a totally not good design pattern. It's in our Pokemon, it's in our smart component and we need to put this within our service and we can just copy and paste that. Should be good, cannot find, oh, I need to add this. So, and would you look at that TypeScript saying you are ready to rock. So dependency injection, as I mentioned before, you put dependency injection into your constructor. And this is ubiquitous across languages. Whenever you need to use a constructor, 
you put it up or whenever you need to use dependency injection you put it up here so we're gonna go pokemon service and the great thing about angular and typescript is it makes it so that all of this is very pleasing on the eyes and very easy to look at so next thing is we whenever this actually boots up you see computers you need to tell them exactly what to do they're smart in certain ways but they're actually kind of dumb in a lot of ways and angular doesn't know that you need this available you need this like it doesn't know like i need pokemon in my my view model it just is just going to do whatever you tell it to do so we need to tell it to come in here and actually go get our pokemons so we're going to go up here and this dot pokemons is equal to actually i need to go up here too and i need to create so pokemons is equal to an array of pokemon and i'm also going to go in here and put a bang symbol just because it can be um, null if you so choose and then what i'm also going to do is i'm going to say this dot pokemons is equal to this dot pokemons dot service and this will go ahead and populate this actual property up here with this so another thing if you want to see like this is very real world too like let's just say like this is a huge you have no idea what this code does like how do you figure out what this particular piece of code does you just go into here you either go to implementations or you go to definitions and i'm going to go to implementations because it's an actual implementation sometimes it's definitions just click in between them and then i can actually see in here within my pokemon service class that i indeed have this get pokemons so let's go ahead and see if this thing runs so i'm going to go up here i'm going to go ng serve and see if this thing works hopefully okay awesome we have pikachu is not cool we could remove him squirtle is cool charmander is cool the moment of truth is if we can actually remove them if i click this button to remove them and i get no errors this means our service is actually working and boom our service works without a hitch that's services the next video we're going to be talking about how do you do this but how do you do it asynchronously with observables anyway i hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure to hit that like button make sure to hit that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching